The armies of Calradia march to a war for honor and glory for the wealth and fame that comes with becoming the emperor of it all. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to our 100 mod playthrough and welcome back to our massive world war that we started. We wanted to go ahead and commemorate the gloriousness of our brand new empire, the empire of the flying dong that we paid 5 million gold to to actually become a proper de jure kingdom. So now the land we take will be actually properly ours which is very nice however of course that has led us to some pretty tricky situations so you can already start to see that our castle which we just took at the end of the last episode is already under siege i understand that we are going to go back and claim that probably just author as of the battle because i doubt they'll leave a big garrison there but we need to deal with whatever is attacking us at charis it is imperative that we do take them out also we're going very slowly our prisoners is slowing us down and then just our normal base speed i guess could we have so many soldiers slower party setting is fine yeah, okay, that's brutal. That is really brutal because we need to get over here a lot faster than we are. I would absolutely cry if they managed to take this before we could get there in time. I'm hoping now that we are on the road, we'll be able to get there and actually deal with whatever they have. Okay, here we go. Approaching the position. It does seem that they have about a thousand men. So we are actually pretty equal when it comes to uh, numbers in this battle. We outnumber them a little bit. And I think we also get the garrison to help out. We want to make sure that we do utilize all our upgrades as well. Because yeah, look at this. There's, uh, there's 15 of our 27 Heli Oscar, but can just immediately go up to the, the full tier ones, which is really nice. So we'll definitely grab them. Oh, we also have this mountain leader as well that goes up into a Batanian Fane and Batanian Champion. I kind of like him with whatever rank he's at. So we'll grab that, get some more Helios trained infantry and upgrade to some more pikes as well. Let's do that. Any prisoners we can take? I mean, we might as well take them all. We lose a bit of morale, but I mean, again, who really cares when it comes to morale? Quite quickly as well, before we do dive into this battle, I have also renamed three of our new companions as well. You guys can see them right here and I'll put up their backstories up on your screen right now from the YouTube comments. We still definitely have a room for a few more companions as well in our army slash kingdom slash empire. And as we create more clans again, that will expand. So continue to go and drop me some more of the names down below in the description. And yeah, I'll probably pick maybe two or three more and we'll see where we're at after that. But I really do appreciate it. Also really helps out as well. It really helps out because a lot of the time I just can't think of cool names and you guys come in clutch with them. Also something else really quickly. We have a hundred 101 of these elite pikemen. That is impressive. It's going to come into clutch. Uh, it's going to come in very clutch when we do fight the Valandians right now because, again, you know, they're a horse based faction. So going up against them and seeing what we can do. Actually, I'm interested to see. Can I see how many horses they have? They actually only have 51 horses. Okay, that's not going to be too scary then. Let's assault the siege camp. We could break him, but again, we have too many men. The AI will just run away. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty decently close battle. Uh, balance power wise is about, you know, a little bit in edging in our favor. Um, and we have quite a few familiar lords here as well. A lot of kind of back lords, but also a handful of these actually pretty popular lords as well who we'll be able to put in our dungeon. We are also currently playing with a, a thousand men on the battlefield. I did try to actually make it so that I could utilize the bigger battles with the 2000 man battle sizer. It just seemingly crashed. I'm not sure if there's something I'm missing with it. I was trying my best to get it to work. I just couldn't seem to make it work. So I do apologize. I will continue. And again, if anybody has any advice on how to get that to work on my current version, maybe if Saif is work watching this, then he can let us let me know. Um, but yeah, I was having some trouble getting that to work, which is unfortunate because doubling these battle sizes would be great. I have also actually just upgraded my uh, CPU as well. Intel were kind enough to send me their new uh, 13th Gen i9 13900K, which is an absolute monster. The thing has so many cores. It has performance cores as well. It's, yeah, it's really, really good. Um, and yeah, absolutely demolishes my rendering and game playing very nicely. Uh, the only downside to be being sent a really top of the line uh, CPU is that my poor GPU, my 2070 Super, definitely does feel the pain. Uh, the old girl is definitely not up, for, up to, you know, kind of matching the uh, the new i9 with all of its new gloriousness. So yeah, gonna have to definitely look at, at graphics cards. This is so goddamn expensive still. I really wish the world gets some more silicon so the graphics cards can come back down, honestly. But overall, my point is just hopefully in the next campaign we do on Bannerlord or just in future stuff, hopefully we can really start to push like the size of battles and the quality of the images and stuff because yeah, my computer is, is getting a big upgrade and I guess I will if I can't get a sponsor for a new graphics card. I probably will just buy the bullet and uh, yeah, buy one myself. So uh, that should make for an absolutely monstrous PC and hopefully some just monstrous 
monstrous battles and simulations that we can do. And now let's uh, push up our missile line now. We're going to throw these guys forward to start harassing them. The AI has done a pretty good job at mounting that hill. Uh, and it seemingly they have decent soldiers. These Valandian for infantry are very, very good. Uh, they, they, they output some of the highest damage out of anybody. And considering that they don't actually have any like a lot of cavalry to kind of run into our pikes they should do decently against that especially some of these halberds as well it's nice to see that our crossbows are already opening up on them and you can see from the distance that it looks very beautiful with our two infantry lines i'm not sure how i'm going to approach it whether i'm going to kind of throw in just one big line and have like a, a line out flanking them maybe going after their missiles we do have to be a bit careful though because do remember their reinforcements are going to spawn like right here and that could really come to hurt us so maybe what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount this hill right here and i think that's actually not a bad idea idea. I think it is going to force their cavalry, in which I'm not opposed to. I don't mind taking out a few of these guys, uh, especially if we can get in and our pikes just start doing some damage. Seems like there's a bit of a lord here, so let's maybe... Oh, I don't have my mace anymore. Do I know? We switched out ages ago. Uh, some pretty brutal fighting. Uh, also, someone did mention in the last episode as well not to go cinematic all the time as well like this. You guys like seeing the, uh, the battle kill counter, which again, I totally vibe with and I totally understand that that is kind of a big draw for people. So I will try my best when it's appropriate it to go cinematic and when it's not cinematic i will try my best to actually make it so you guys can see the kill counter so you guys can actually see uh, who's getting the kills and who's taking out the opponents okay perfect we've set up our formation here we actually just dealt pretty nicely with the enemy the cavalry line we cut them down to about half right how many kills about 30 kills yeah we just sliced their horses in two hell yeah that's really really nice indeed now let's bring up our crossbows and just start skirmishing with them Look at our crossbows. They are ranged in now. So much green on that right-hand side. Yeah, that's what we love to see. I'm a little bit concerned about this left flank, though. Um, I might just detach. They already attack. They're already attacking. Let's rotate around. Let's bring our missiles back. Um, yeah, I, I was a bit scared about it. I was just about to actually dispatch a, a decent portion. I guess we can still do that. Like, why not? Why not? Let's, let's give it a go because it is quite fun to do. Um, I just wish Tail Worlds would give us a better option. Like, I wish there was a way to, like, use this mouse on this screen. I guess it's it's only because I'm on, uh, on RTS camera I can do this. But I wish there was a way I could just, like, drag, like, click this and, like, select, like, 50 of them and then drag them to a new selection. I think that would make battles so much more dynamic, and I'd love to see it. At the moment, I have to, I have to select the unit I want to go ahead and do that too. Press F3, then I have to press F5, and then I have to select this, and then I have to go down to here. Uh, it just gets a little bit finicky. Like, I wish there was just a way I could do it. Like, And again, if I hadn't, hadn't had the game pause, this would be, like, impossible to do. Like, this would not be something that you could actually do. Um, and just being able to do that on the fly, I think, would be absolutely incredible. So let's set that up right now. We're going to send our cavalry off to pretty go after the missiles whilst we're here. And then just go on, continue the battle uh, field right there. I don't know why it also is trying to get me to go all the way back there as well. Now let's move in. So we should be much more defended against the enemy cavalry if they come at us. I've dispatched a pretty nice line. My cavalry is charging headlong into enemy lines. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's get this infantry line, put it into shield wall. Uh, and then this line can go and make and start advancing. Yeah, you guys engage the enemy. So you're not going to go super aggressive. Just enough aggressiveness that it's going to do some good damage. Oh, that's a lot of green right off the bat right there. I'm a bit scared of this line. And how's our line on this flank? They're kind of breaking through a little bit. But yeah, they've caught up a large portion of the enemy line here. That's great. Are you friendly? You are friendly. Good. Okay, is that the enemy cavalry pretty much dealt with? Wow, you guys did an amazing job. Let's select them. Let's rotate them around now. Let's get them around to help out this block. Nice, our other line is now engaging. Like, how awesome would it be right now, just to go back to my point uh, of that? Because, like, I don't want all these guys going into this section. Like, I wish I could just, like, select half of these guys and then send them off. Again, I can do it. It's just a bit finicky. And if I didn't have the game pause of RTS camera, it'd be too hard to do. Like, I'd... I'd love to be able to just do this, something like that, and then select seven, and then tell them to go after these guys. Like, you know, stuff like that, I think, would actually take Bannerlord battles to, like, the next level. Give you way more micromanagement and way more stuff to do, rather than the current system uh, that, that, you know, is set up. And I don't think it would be that difficult to do, honestly. Like, I think it's completely plausible that, that is something that they could 100% do. Uh, let me know in the comments, because uh, I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say on that as well. Is that something that you guys actually would like to see? Uh, these guys can now go in and also just being able to press like middle mouse button right now and maybe hovering over that the like infantry block and letting go of it and it would select them automatically so you could command them and you have to like finicky you have to go like go through your commands 
I don't know. It's just like stuff like this I think about, which would just be a really interesting way of, uh, of going through. Because sometimes I do forget, you know, like what the hell I'm doing um, half the time and like what unit is what unit, especially if you want to use like multiple divisions as well. It becomes very difficult to keep that up and uh, up and going. I imagine their reinforcements will be spawning very soon along with my reinforcements. Oh, we should also get our missiles up here as well so they can shoot him. Boys, keep on pushing. Uh, where are their reinforcements spawning? I'm, I'm pretty interested in that. Oh, the reinforcements are spawning all the way back here. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we push, push them back enough, I think, right? If we select everybody, we can see them. Yeah, okay. We push them back enough. Let's reform the line. Um, yeah, let's reform the line. We don't actually have that bigger numbers uh, right now. Let's go that and then let's go that. Uh, missiles are reforming. I just want everybody back and we'll also bring back the cavalry as well. We don't want them to overcommit. Because again, we, we've killed how many thousands? We've killed a lot. We've killed like 400 soldiers and not lost a lot because of our superior tactics. But we need to be careful not to like overcommit here and end up taking the, uh, the brunt of the enemy assault as we do that. The nice thing as well, once you break the enemy line once, they really start to come in rabbles. And look at the quality compared to what we were just fighting. Okay, let's stick these guys into a scheme formation and we're going to tell them just to straight up check charge. We're then going to put these guys and we're going to tell these guys to engage the enemy. So they're going to push up. They're in a normal line. They're going to push up. And we also have our flanking forces as well who are, who are reformed up here. And we're going to use these guys. Yeah, they're just here to basically protect the missiles. Do they have any cavalry though? Yeah, one horse. One lone horse right there. Okay, that's perfect. Let's select these guys then. Uh, bring them around. We'll bring these guys around here as well. And they can just deal with the missiles. They're all in loose as well, right? Uh, loose and loose. Okay, perfect. And our other lines are going ham. RTS camera, for whatever reason, has me set all the way back there as well. Player controlled, uh, just none. Just leave me. Let me stand still. Uh, I mean, it's deploying my cavalry, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, we'll just leave it like that so it doesn't throw me back. Oh, yeah. We'll also stick dark cavalry and just tell them to charge now. Um, yeah, just charge. The battle's won, right? We've killed 600 of them. I doubt they'll spawn in their last couple hundred. I assume they're just going to break and that's going to be the battle. Uh, no, they are spawning in more men. Okay, I mean, that's fine, right? Like, we don't mind. Because I imagine they're all going to be, like, super low quality. It's going to be, like, the recruits, the bottom of the barrel. They are scraping the, the barrel. If you're playing Hearts of Iron, that's what they'd be doing right now. Uh, and they wouldn't be standing uh, one bit. Yeah, look at that. They're all there. I mean, they're, they're a beautiful color. Don't get me wrong, but... Yeah, it's not high quality whatsoever. The rest of our line has now broken. Their crossbow is still able to do a bit of damage. We took a handful of casualties as they were retreating. But yeah, they, they, they basically positioned themselves right here at the end uh, so that they can't do anything. And this should make for a yeah, nice battle for us. We lost you know, barely any 66 men in that engagement is not bad when we killed over 800. Our army is just so, so good. It's so good. But the thing is that these battles are relatively easy. But do keep in mind... Every time we've been dominating these battles, and we'll take another great sword. Um, or do we take a Helios Guard? There's, there was a few people who came up with good Helios Guard names in the last episode, which I didn't pick. Um, so put them again down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, if I find a good one, I'll go and add it. But yeah, what I was saying was just keep in mind that uh, we are, of course, dominating the battlefield pretty heavily. Look at them great swords, 178 kills, insane. Uh, but we have just mainly been fighting Valandia, and our army seem to do really good against Valandia. Like, they dominate them on the battlefield. So it'll be interesting to see how we fare against a force like the Kuzites or the Sturgeons, or even the Azura. We haven't fought the Azura in a long time. Prisoner-wise, there are 469. I'm going to take them all and we're just going to sell them, I think, um, because why not? There's more Helios Guard that have leveled up. We will 100% take that. Uh, don't need the rest of them. Now, the question is, do we want the loot to sell? And I think we'll just take the food. Do they have any water? No water, because we are starting to run a little... Yeah, we only have six barrels of water left. Wow, good thing I actually brought that up. We'll take all of that and we'll take the horses, of course, and we can, we can just keep everything else for experience, whatever. I don't really need money at this point. We're making 60 grand. There's a of course, quickly rush in here to um, uh, sell these prisoners whilst we still have the option to. Um, everybody else is going to be recruiting as well, which is good getting their army back up to full strength. Uh, we can now go to what the tavern, right? In 126k to ransom these prisoners. Of course, I want to choose the ones because I don't want half these guys to actually go. A lot of these, these soldiers uh, units that I want to keep and I want to upgrade and add to my own army. Basically everybody here is what I want to keep. You guys want to put in my prison just to stop the oh my god, there's so many lords. Yeah, you guys want to stick in my prison just to reduce the amount that we're fighting. So we'll go to the bottom and I guess just start clicking. Again, these are going to be the cheaper ones. I mean, I say that, that's still like 50k. I guess it's the sheer scale of these the amount of soldiers we have here. And I guess we're just going to leave it at like this. Yeah, let's do that. It's still 50k. And then we're going to go to our 
dungeon really quickly. So we're going to go to the keep, then we're going to go to the dungeon, manage prisoners, and then we're going to stick air, all these lords over there. The main reason I'm doing this is to stop them from like rising armies and going to attack me. We are also using the uh, enhanced uh, prisoner mod as well, so they're less likely to escape. Uh, which is, again, obviously very beneficial. I don't think we have any more upgrades. They should oh, we do have upgrades. Nice. Our bow skill went up, which is good. Increased party size. Um, yes, please. Five more men. I'll take that. And our roguery went up as well. Uh, more bandit units in my army are a little bit better. Um, and also uh, bandit prisoners recruit faster. We don't really care too much. That would actually be a pretty useful one. I'd rather my, um, uh, yeah, I'd rather my prison limit increase. And actually, I, I should have waited. I could have got a 20% better deal on selling them people uh, if I if I waited. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, like, them decisions as well, what are our, like, kingdom laws? Did we just copy all of the uh, the Landian Dementor laws as well? We did, right? So we have, we have tax duty. Um, we have military duty, tax, and that. Okay. I should really take a look at this. I mean, let's do it. Let's do it right now. So it doesn't actually show me what our current tax duty is, but I can only assume it means that we're making the most money. If we were to change to military duty, we'd gain a little bit more militia quality, which isn't a bad idea. And also the nobles would be a bit more military focused, which is good. If we go to lax duties, it means that the craftsman militarization is down and the noble tax output is down. It does increase the settlement research and influence outputs. I have no idea what research is. Is research tied to like my, if we go to, again, Banner Kings is such an expansive mod, but sometimes it is hard to do it. I think that's tied to innovation, yeah, which is tied to these things, which we haven't really looked at. And are we close to anything? It doesn't really look like we're that close. Again, I'm not sure if this is like we've just started all of this now, all the innovations. And it's also hard to see, like, does this even really affect the gameplay right uh, too much, you know? Um... I honestly think this would be a really cool system if you had to, like, invest in it for, for a sense. Like, add some more player urgency to it. Like, I actually have to, like, select a focus and then it researches, uh, you know, over time and it, like, keeps me updated. Kind of almost like how they've done the, if we go to my character screen, kind of almost like how they've done the education and then the, the lifestyle choices. Again, in the version that we're playing, this is broken. This has, has actually been fixed in the newer version of Banner Kings. Um, and also, you do this way faster. You it doesn't take like 50 hours to get to the point I'm at. Um, so yeah, I think having like the, the innovations tied to that would actually be a really cool system and actually have them being like big impactful things but when they are researched, it like completely changes the scope of the empire. I think that'd be really, really cool. Or, or like tie that into the building system as well. That'd be so cool. Sorry, I feel like this episode, I'm going off on tangents and things I would love to see in Banner Lord. I, I really am. So yeah, next we have, so yeah, that's nobility, sorry. Next we have Craftsman, which I assume is going to be the same sort of tax law. And then we also have uh, Serfs as well. I mean, having Serfs mili militia contribution increased, not a bad idea. I assume that would just mean that we make way more. But also food is scarce. There, there are plenty of famines in Caradia at the moment. Uh, we could also reduce the um, increase of prosperity and loyalty. Reduce agricultural outputs. We don't want that. Yeah, we're going to leave that at that. What else lacks for the craftsmen? So the craftsmen increase production. The craftsmen have better loyalty and prosperity. Uh, but they're less militarized and they give us less tax. I'm going to do that. Let's just change that. Let's, I mean, let's look at the other ones first. We still have four more to look at. But I think that's going to be a good one to do, right? We want more production so we get more food. We get better resources. Um, you know, stuff like the, the milk, like the second tier production of resources. I think that would be good. Obviously, we get 40% less tax from them. But we're making like 60k. I don't really care. I need stuff to spend my money on. Next, we have slave duty. So they're currently on hard labor. Uh, I think I'm going to... So hard labor, does it say to tailors, blah, 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 increase mining? So this is increasing like mining production. I might stick them on agricultural because I'd rather just more food, more food, more water. So let's do that. Uh, it's cost me 300. Enacting the agricultural duty law throughout the Dementia of the Kingdom. Flying Dong, the law will be enacted uh, for every title in the hierarchy. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. I like that a lot. Next, we have the Calradian uh, slave law, right? So we have Calradian law. We have Valandian law. Um, again, I wish it would tell me what the current one is. Like, it doesn't show me what the percentage is and what it changes. But the Valandian or the Valandic one is reduce the prisoners cannot be enslaved. The Azari one is demand increased by 50%. Yeah, I don't really understand this as much. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that as is. The drafting, we could make it so notable provides volunteers based on the estate's power. Uh, rural volunteers are restricted to the kingdom's lords. Recruitment prices increased. 
So this means only my kingdom could recruit soldiers from my lands. That's not bad. Vassalage noblers provides volunteers to their some armies. Rural volunteers are restricted to the kingdom's lords. Increases from the sorry influence from the settlements are in reduced. Um, I kind of like this, right? Rural volunteers are restricted to the kingdom's lords. Recruitment prices increased. Uh, is that going to mess people up though? Or well, vassalage provides their suitable. Yeah, I'm gonna go vassalage. Let's do it. Okay, now we have a state uh, tenure. Uh, Feel. We have this one. Estate owners do not pay taxes. Improve hearth growth. And then we have growing estates is banned. Lord party. Oh, Lord party size is increased by 10%. Um, and so is it, if I do this, is everybody in my kingdom going to get a 10% boost to their party size? I think we're going to do it. That seems like insane. What was the other one? Oh, we can't, we can't change it now probably for a while. Are we stuck now on everything? Yeah. Oh, no, we can still change this one. But I've changed all of the other ones, right? Uh, then it was just, I think that's everything, right? Slave duties we changed. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, that's perfect. I did also notice that now I think because I've um, I've changed a lot of my lords and stuff, my, my council is now looking a little bit thin as well. So let's definitely get a grand marshal. Uh, we need one of those for sure. Uh, and we have a lot of unnamed lords. Let's go ahead and get Alric. Alric can be my, my council. Uh, that'll improve my relations. We'll make Alexi. Alexi can be my... And I'll fill out the rest of them just so we have these council positions. The reason why they've uh, gone so, like, kind of uh, hidden is just because uh, we've made so many new kingdoms and stuff. I'm interested to see how this is going to affect everything, you know, across the board. Like, are my soldiers going to have different armies now? Are they going to be able to recruit better? Are they going to be able to recruit worse? Like, is the fact that nobody else is able to recruit, how's that going to affect stuff? That's going to be really interesting. But now, though, we have to rush back over here. Oh, it's no one, does, no one got under siege. I wonder what happened. I wonder if like another army was there and they, they lost it. Also, like why did they abandon this castle and come down here? Yeah, taking a look at my unit size, it still hasn't gone up, unfortunately. So I'm not sure if it takes a little while for that to uh, kind of come into play or, or what. But that's fine. So now we need to look at where we want to attack next. It doesn't seem like the land, uh, sorry, the Azari are too focused on me right now. I think they're probably fighting us. Well, you can see Poros. Yeah, there's some big sieges over here. Uh, if you want to see who's over here as well, you can see... Um, wait, who is sieging this? No, oh, someone is. Like, one soldier is sieging this. What the hell? Sometimes. And we've got big armies over here sieging as well in Poros. So it seems like a few of the Empire forces are busy elsewhere. We were, like, here, right? Um, so now we need to look. Do we want to continue to maybe push up and kind of take these flanks here? Like, this castle's a pretty important one. I think I'm going to go for that one against the Empire. Because by taking that castle, again, we kind of secure our northern borders a bit more. And just make it that little bit safer. Um, which I think would be really nice. Oh, we're dehydrated. I completely forgot to buy water. That is not good. We're going to start taking casualties if we're not careful. The thing is, as well, is like, there's not really a lot of water everywhere. So I guess we're going to head back to a few of these villages. I mean, 100 barrels just there were, was amazing. And I'm, I'm hoping some of the lords we just changed will also benefit that. So let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to see what people think. Like, should I ever make peace from now on? Do you guys... Oh, nice, 170 water. Do you guys think it would be fun just to, like... This is, like, the last saga of the campaign. And we just conquer Caradia from start to finish from this point. I don't know. Do you guys think that would be fun to watch? Do you think that would be a big challenge? Because my armies would never get a chance to, like, rebuild... But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'd be very interested to see what your opinions are on that. I'm also hoping we're going to have a lot of water here. Only 40 barrels. That sucks. That really does. Uh, we can also buy a lot of this stuff if we need. Okay, 300 water is enough. Oh yeah, we also have a bunch in our... In our I've totally forgot about that as well. We also stock a bunch of water, right, in our in our hold. I think we should have like 500 barrels here, which I guess is only a... Uh, you know, it's only pretty smart to actually grab that right now. So let's keep stash. And then we have, yeah, a ton of food here. No water, though, but tons of hogs and sheep. Okay, cool. We'll take the grain, and that'll give us enough food to hopefully last us, and then we'll head back up north. No one's sieging us, right? We're just double-checking. Okay, cool. Let's head up north, then. Let's take this castle, and then I might wrap around, right? You know, start... Because there's, like, a good mountain range here. We'll take, like, this castle, and then Legata, uh, and then that'll give us a nice little river kind of defending us. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. And then what we might do is then push back down to Volandia. People have told me the way to get rid of this character. There's like a hero here um, in, in prison and you can like kill him if you if you do some console command. So we can also take that castle and then kind of go from there. I also... Oh, we're, we're sieged down here. Okay, we have to head down here man, and deal with the Azurai. I'd love to expand, but yeah, we have to head south. 
Uh, but yeah, I'd love to also, as I was mentioning, push the Azurai out as well. Uh, push them to the east part of the river. That's kind of my goal against the Azurai, is to at least take, you know, this and then a bunch of... There's a ton of castles down here. But yeah, at least take all of this. Might be easier said than done, but we'll give it a go. Okay, let's see what they're sieging with us. I mean, I doubt they're sieging too much. Also, we're getting sieged across the board now, uh, which is a little bit scary. Yeah, this is immediately under siege now as well. Yeah, there's going to be, I think, the, the reoccurring theme is just, yeah, constant attacks. And we're going to have to give ground somewhere to make ground elsewhere. Uh, only 400 men. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. What I might do then is I might, like, let Valandia siege this castle because it's not my main city. But we could just set sail. Like, we could just sail here and get there very quickly. You know, that's the advantage of all these coastal cities that I've built myself is like we can just use the sea to really cut down the travel distance. Yeah, I think what we do actually is we come over here, we smash this army. I, I don't need to fight this battle either. Uh, we deal with them. We'll help defend. I definitely don't want to uh, break in. We want to assault the siege camp and we'll just auto resolve this one against the, the quite beautiful gold and red Azurai. Granted, we don't lose too many men. I mean, again, that's still a lot of men. I really don't want to lose. Uh, I mean, granted, we only lost four men, so it is what it is. It's fine. And um, then we're going to sail up and deal with the Valandians, and we just have to make ground against the Valandians. We'll make sure to drop off these new prisoners into the dungeon so that the Azurai can't, again, amass larger armies. I wonder what happens if I just put literally everybody uh, into my dungeons. That would be pretty funny. And now we march across the sea. I mean, if anything is here to show that I am the true emperor of the seven seas is definitely this moment right here but obviously this is just a, a bug with carrier uh carrier expanded normally we should just be all on boats but i guess for whatever reason in this build it just doesn't work i believe it did used to work and i guess something must have happened as we got further on in this campaign i mean honestly it's pretty impressive how much uh, time that we've spent in this campaign with very minimal issues like we've had crashes here and there but nothing like that crazy and nothing that's just killed the campaign I know I've just completely jinxed myself and I do apologize, but let's look. Let's look at how many days we've played. Because well, we're in episode 26 now, 25 now. Um, and each episode takes about two hours to record. Yeah, 600 days isn't actually that much. We must have been playing quite slowly. But like actually like recording wise, say every episode takes, you know, two, two hours to record. Uh, that ends up making this series like a 50 hour series, which is really impressive how stable it has been for the most part. I'm really hoping that they're attacking. Please hold please hold yeah they've got 150 defenders that's fine okay we're gonna get here in time nice that's gonna be really good let's uh go ahead and make, make sure we drop a save and we're gonna assault the siege camp again probably not a battle we're gonna have to fight yeah i'm not gonna bore you guys with battles that are just gonna be easily won and also it does reduce my army a little bit uh you know yeah, this battle's you know a slaughter we're just gonna auto resolve this one um and yeah again we did, did lose a lot of men annoyingly uh but again what are you gonna do there's not really much i can do about that as long as we don't lose uh, in like insane amount it is fine I'm actually quite curious as well to find out what happens if we like capture every single lord in all of the land area. Like, what happens? Do they just like not have armies anymore? I think that'd be really interesting uh, to actually see. Oh, it did just say the looter hero had to. Uh, not from there, though. Okay, cool. It's fine. Yeah, there's a, there's a bug with the looter hero that I mentioned, which we have to be a little bit careful of. Also, look at this as well. These guys are spawning at tier four, which is like not bad whatsoever. They're actually like. Okay, we're going to have to, like, visit a few of these cities, I think, just to kind of look at the quality. Because it's also really good, like, when I go to a village, like, my army also recruits from that village. So if I find the good villages that have, like, tier 4 soldiers off the bat, that's not bad. Oh, also, our son is... I forgot we even had a son, to be honest. Okay, uh, can we recruit from here? Yeah, like, the herb value is not bad one bit. But let's go over here. Let's go siege this. Um, oh, there's a lot of uh, enemy armies here as well. Well, do your worst. There's 700 defenders here. We're going to probably have to make a breach. The only problem is, like, are we under siege anywhere? Do we have time to take this castle? We, we, we have to, right? Everybody else is busy elsewhere, which is nice. Like, it seems like all the other factions are internally fighting. So we're not too worried about that. Um, oh, it does. You know, they, uh, did Britannia always have this castle? I felt like they lost it and then took it and then lost it. But it'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the other sieges are all going. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of war scattered across all of this land so i'm hoping that everybody just fights and fights and fights and you know won't just make peace immediately that they have to be at war for 40 days so we at least have battle on our side their surrender chance is rising which is annoying because i obviously want to fight battles i mean we could assault but i also wouldn't mind we are deep in enemy territory yeah no we're definitely we're not taking the 260k or whatever it's cool that they're offering us everything they have to like leave leave them alone like that's cool that the ai does that 
at this point, though, we do just need land. The main reason they're doing that as well is, yeah, they're, they're out of food now. So they are going to be starting to uh, starve. Again, it'll be interesting to see how long they can survive for in this one. There's not really a lot of support coming. They've got like a couple hundred men here, but they need to have more balance of power than us more than anything else. It also takes so long to actually build these trebuchets. Uh, I wonder if they're tankier. Are they tankier? Let's have a look. Not really. Is everything going to start shooting? I mean, it does one shot. I was just remember we're not building anything else. I don't know. They do seem a little bit tankier. We should probably wait for like two, maybe. Yeah, let's wait for like two. Um, and then we can go in. I mean, to be fair, we could also just auto resolve as well. Uh, again, just making sure that none of our other castles are under siege. We'll keep on scanning as best as we can. Defenders have requested another parlay. And they're just yeah, going to surrender. They don't. They don't. They, don't, they can't stand against us. We're going to take everybody. And we're just going to sell them. We could also put them in our dungeon if we wanted to. Uh, we're not changing him at all. Yeah, we'll do that. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I also really hate these trousers on this armor piece. I might change it out, honestly. Uh, but yeah, we'll take that and we'll take the food, of course. So we just took this castle. We just starved it out. Normally, you know, like Valandia. Ooh, that's a good one. What do we want? There's only a 5% damage increase rather than a 10%. Because we're playing in an older patch where it doesn't actually show you the percentages here. We can either have a 5% damage increase or a 10% damage reduction. I want to think the damage reduction is better, honestly. Because we're already in really good armor. And it's not like we're struggling to kill enemy people. So having that 10% damage reduction is way better. So we'll leave that. We'll show mercy to the city at all, at all, of course. And I'll keep it for myself. We'll probably give this over to a new new clan. Um, we have the influence. We have the money. Uh, so one thing I'm a little bit um, curious about. And we'll make sure we save in case this crashes the game. I'm very curious to see how this works with Tejour. Like, Do we have to claim this now? Because yeah, this is still we're usurping those. Yeah, so we do still have to usurp stuff because this is still technically the kingdom of Valandia. Um, whereas every all the other land is now de jure our land. Okay, so basically we take this, uh, we claim it, we, we we take it, and then we put it in the de jure lands of our own kingdom. That makes sense. That's cool. Uh, and yeah, that's fine. Study scholarship. Oh, I did not realize you could even do this. Uh, that's cool. Is that just showing me the, uh, the tutoring? I think that's probably just showing me the tutoring, right? The scholar here. No, the tactics here is this. Okay, we'll do this. Uh, get some more experience. Like, I've been doing this all the time because we have the money just to, to, to burn. So we might as well do all of that uh, whenever we can. You can just keep on studying this for like five grand and we get a little bit. Your scholarship skill is in in increasing. I mean, I'll take that. More scholarship, the better. The next rank is uh, actually points coming of age. Extra experience gain for companions and family members. That's good. Increase reading books. We definitely didn't utilize this as much, I don't think. But, oh, but our tax has gone up. Nice. Uh, so right here, with no morale penalty. I mean, that doesn't matter uh, really whatsoever. The disorganized state, uh, that's fine. Lose 25 fewer men when breaking out and breaking into settlements under siege. That's really nice. We might take that almost immediately. Uh, decrease the duration of disorganized state. That's also nice, but we're not going to be breaking. Like, I don't, I'm not really scared of anything. You can also escape from battle by leaving 50%. Both of these are really good. I think we're going to take this one, though, so that if we ever do need to break in the sieges to defend them, which I'm sure is something we're going to 100% do, uh, that's going to be a fun thing to mess around with. Okay, cool. Now that we are here, let's go to our clan. Uh, oh, we're actually almost clear uh, clan rank 6 as well. That would be that's really good. That would be really nice. Let's go to our parties, which are pretty battered and bruised, to be honest. And let's make another lord. Longus, Jongus, you have already, uh, you've, you've done a pretty good thing here, my friend, and I want you to reward you for your limited service in the kingdom. Have a furf, have this new one we're taking. It's going to cost me 20 grand, um, and yeah, you're going to be the, the Jlongus clan, I guess. Uh, I assume that's a, a pun on uh, Apollo's campaign. Oh, here's a really, here's like a Templar banner. That is very nice. Oh, we're over our prison limit as well, I need to deal with that. Yeah, look at that. Hell yeah, that looks sick. That looks really cool. Okay, that's another bit of land uh, incorporated into the empire. Uh, and I'm tempted to keep on going on Valandia. Like maybe taking Galland and then this castle and then maybe this castle and then maybe this. Yeah, like maybe taking everything south of the river. If we have the time, it's not a bad idea. Like, let's do it. Let's, let's keep on putting up the pressure. I do need to sell my prisoners first though. That's a casual 82k from all of our prisoners. I mean, that's the garrison, I guess. Oh, what I probably should have actually have done is, is sold them into slavery in the city to boost production. That actually would have been a, a much better idea, I think. It's fine, though. 
uh, you know, it's not the end of the world. What's the garrison? So we've got 120 defenders here, which is good. Um, we'll leave that for now. I am interested in the type of units here. Okay. So it's only like these really late tiers that have that good quality. Okay. Uh, just double checking anywhere it isn't under siege. No, we're good. Right. Yeah, we're good across the board. Any other, anything else change? Oh, the Kuzites coming in. And they're taking land. Okay, good on the Kuzites. And then this has been taken by the Northern Empire as well. I'm hoping we'll see some eradications, honestly, in this playthrough. I mean, something I can also do as well, if people want to see it, is I can also make it so that just like, we can just start this eternal war now. This could be like the Ender's Game right here, where I just, I, everyone's at war and we just nobody can make peace. I can make that happen if that's something you guys want to see. So again, let me know in the comments, because uh, that'd be really, really fun. I definitely do understand as well that people are really loving this series. I just want to make that premise. I'm not looking to end this. And me by saying like this eternal war, it's not going to end anytime soon, obviously. But, you know, it's going to have to end at some point. And uh, I'm just thinking of cool ways to kind of progress us down that route. And hopefully you guys can maybe come up with some cool ideas yourself. Because, uh, yeah, we could definitely do some really cool stuff. So they have this castle as well. I think we'll take this. It kind of provides us pretty nice uh you know kind of security on this side and again we can make another clan if we wanted to they also have a decent amount of soldiers and our army is running low uh on soldiers also uh which is something to keep it keep in mind again they just don't have the quality here the militia just can't stand up to our army but these author resolves are killing us like they are slowly whittling down our army i mean my army is still fine but my my companions armies are uh you know are definitely taking that here one thing I could actually do as well is I, I could maybe spend like a million gold on just getting soldiers for everyone in my in my party and give them over by buying mercenaries. Um, again, it'll be super costly. Like the, the good ones I would buy would be like 70k a pop for 30. If I was to do that for everybody, it'd probably be all my money. Maybe that is something we want to do. Uh, we're also dehydrated, so we need to win the siege quickly. Oh, wow. Look at this castle. There's like some newer castles that I've just never really fought over. That looks incredible, right? Look at that. That looks so good. That looks so goddamn cool. I wish we'd get... Oh, no, I have seen this one. I've seen this one once before. Um, and it looks so good. It looks really cool. I wish, though, there, there was, like, more castles like this. And I wish it was more of a stage thing. Like, the AI will defend both of these points. But I wish, like, they, they were, like, these points, maybe. And then you also had to come back and take this. It's a real shame that they don't kind of, like, multi-layer sieges. So I wish the AI would do more. Uh, as I think it'd look really cool. Look at their soldiers pushing over as well. I imagine you could totally... Where are missiles? I bet you can totally cheese this and just shoot them to pieces. Missiles, get your asses over here. There's going to be enemies there. Yeah, like, look at it. Yeah, okay. Oh, God. This is probably why the AI doesn't do this. Also, I like how the AI is, like, set up here as well. It's quite cool. Can we start shooting as well? What are they doing? The fools. Like, it'd be nice as well if, like, the soldiers on the left just, you know, stayed on the left. And Because the, the reason they're doing this, by the way, is that, like, the soldiers here have been like, oh, we need to go over to the left-hand side. And the soldiers that spawned on the left-hand side like, oh, we need to go over to the right-hand side. They could quite easily just fix it by, by not doing any of that. Um, but, hey, I'll take it. My missiles basically get free reign to, to shoot in and, and do what they want to. So... I guess it's not the end of the world. Whilst that's all happening, though, the boys are just bringing up the battering ram. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to cover it. It's overwhelm the defenses of the settlement. That's, uh, that's hilarious. The AI is just like, yeah, we're a bit busy right now. We, we, you know, we haven't gone. We haven't gone. We haven't gone. We're a bit busy. I can't come back and, you know, defend the settlement with our lives. It's fine. You already see some of our boys right there. I wonder if someone's going to be able to open this gate. Let's smash this down. And I wonder if the gate's going to be open. Also, do I take damage here? No, I, I can't take the full brunt of the, uh, the ramming. Oh, oh, the gate's already open. We get someone else to open it. Nice. Let's get free. Good job. Good job. Keep that gate open. I'm going to get over here quickly and just help out. We should be able to... Don't let them close it. Don't let them close it. Don't let them close it. Get through. Get through. Keep it breached. Keep the breach open. Block them. Block them. There we go. We'll do some overheads. And yeah, now we're going to rip them apart. There's some really... I've never seen like an arm, a guy like this. Bet, bet, men at arms. Like, there's some units in this uh, game I haven't seen yet. I don't know where the land you're getting these units from. I should really search them up. Like, are they like a mercenary? Are they like a special like royal unit? I honestly don't know. We should look it up, though. Take him down. Could also without our bow level up some skills there. We're getting to the bridge now as well, and I think that the AI is meeting my forces on the other side as well. Yeah, look at that. Oh, this is going to be a massacre. Can I grab some men? Yeah, I have them. Oh, God. There's a lord here. Okay, let's block him. 
Yo, let's block him. Let's block him in. There's no escape. I want to get my main body of infantry and let's bring him down here. Let's go. Smash this guy's skull in first quickly. Block that. And he's getting hit by everybody else. It's a nice little side hit. Okay, cool. Yep, there. There's a sandwich. There is a no escape here for them whatsoever. Okay, let's select everybody now. We'll just charge them. Yeah, we, we sandwiched them. Let's go. This is brutal. I'd be better. I'd just jump into the water if I was them. Um, you could probably... Um, I don't know. You could probably survive... No, oh, I don't know. That looks very rocky. I don't think you could survive that. I don't think you could survive that one bit. But then again, you're not going to be surviving this either. So I guess it's uh, a lose-lose, right? Now, if only I could quite quickly, like, drag some archers into a separate group and get them up here as well. Like, get them on the battlements. Oh, man, that'd be so cool. Okay, another castle under our commander. And I'm, I'm happy with this one. We didn't really lose too many men there, so that's a good one. We also captured a lord or two, which is, again, not a bad thing. We can stick them in the dungeon. They can hold up there quite nicely. Uh, I guess we'll take the robber knights. We do have some cavalry. And again, our, our army isn't looking massive. I could definitely go in and upgrade a few more soldiers if we wanted to. Uh, again, we'll take Berber prisoners because we have the room to. Why not? The horses can come. There's some good horses in there. And the loot, definitely. Oh, oh, look at all that water. Yes, we were dehydrated and everything. Okay, that is amazing. Uh, some decent grit. I mean, we'll just take it all. Why not? Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, awesome. I saved our bacon. That we are being sieged over on this side of the map again. That siege seemingly has broken a couple times, so I'm not sure if the land here and the empire are like fighting over my land. I'm going to take this opportunity, though, and I think I'm going to continue. Obviously, we need to drop some men off here, which the AI should have now just done. Uh, some 60 men is, is really not a lot. But I also want to push down here and just take, take this, like, right away. If I can take these three positions, that would be amazing. I think that's going to be for next episode. That was a pretty decent one uh, for, you know, most of its entirety. We were able to conquer some pretty important lands. We had some big battles. And most importantly, we, like, rearranged the kingdom's laws, you know. This is the true empire of the Flying Dong. And we hopefully have, like, shown, you know, why we're a good kingdom to come to. I should actually look into getting some Valandian lords on my side, especially now that we have money. Like, this is what we, sh uh, we should be doing. We should be taking a look at the, 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 the unlanded lords in the landia because i'm sure there'll be a few not these ye orange ones or these yellow ones uh but like these guys there's gonna start being some lords who actually just don't have castles like these guys only have one castle now um and basically just trying to snipe them find their leader and try and convince them to join us give them some castles and kind of go go from there i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode a massive thank you to all the love that we've been getting on this series i really do appreciate it it's actually insane to me that like episode 25 or 26 whatever one this is is still getting as many likes as many comments like it's actually incredible so i really appreciate it keep up help pushing these videos like it's down to you guys by dropping all them likes and comments that's pushing it out there to more people so i just really appreciate it i'm glad you guys are enjoying the content and let me know on the things i asked you guys about in this episode in the comments because yeah i'm interested to know what you guys have to say on that kind of the future of this campaign etc and i'll see you guys in the next one everybody have a great weekend